so this is algebra review day two officially and we're going to be talking about exponents and square roots and absolute values uh basically a lot of little things where you can make putsy mistakes in math like for instance i think we talked about this but i'm not absolutely positive did we talk about the difference yes. between those two yes. absolutely then which one's negative the top one or the bottom one top, one. top is negative good no, negative 25 here and 25 there. There's a big difference there. What if it's a variable then? What if it's a squared, and I tell you, oh, by the way, a is negative 3. Should I go negative 3 squared, or should I put it in parentheses? Parentheses. Parentheses is correct. Variables act like an empty parenthesis, so they follow those rules, so this one would be 9. Okay? All right, I'm going to go fast because there's a lot to learn. On to this. If you all really understand that thing I showed you yesterday, the first four of these should be easy. The last one, half the class got it wrong last hour. So be careful. The last one's tricky. Answer all five of them. The first one's a no-brainer. Most of you get the first four right. Be positive. You know what's going on on that last one. Every now and then, I forget my headphones in, and I'll even like wear them to bed. Uh, some of you have forgotten your headphones in, so if you have, if that's you, just pop them out, put them away. I carry them too, all the time, but can't have them in during this time. Later on, work time, it'll be fun. I'm not saying the individual's name or anything. Give them a chance to take care of it on their own. All right, now, this is the part where I want you in these two rows. You're going to compare with the person straight across from you, see if you get the same thing, and argue about that last one. These two rows, straight across. And we need the charger today. All right. Dice of Destiny helps me pick somebody without picking on somebody. Row two, person two, Jolie. Wait, I'm wrong, wrong hour. My bad. Sorry. Uh, on the seating chart, it's Julie. Okay. Andrew. There we go. For the first one? Yeah. Just read me the f nine and then. Negative nine. And then. Negative nine. And then. Nine. Correct. Now, the last one. You have to t pick a team. Are you on team nine or are you on team negative nine for the last one? Raise your hand if you're on team nine. Team negative nine. All right. Now. Here's the big drum roll. If you zoom in on this, I know some of you are like, there's no parentheses on that. And therefore, it's negative 9. And others of you are like, no, it's in parentheses. And therefore, it's positive 9. So, which one is it? Is that really, that negative 3 squared, is that really supposed to come out 9 or negative 9? Negative 9 because the squared is inside the parentheses. Yeah. So then there's this negative, which makes it positive 9. Team positive 9 wins. Nice job. Okay. So now, another set. These will take you, it should take you less than one minute to write out those six answers. Ignore that last one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Just write out the answers real quick.
Okay, Dice of Destiny. Who should tell the answers? Row three, person two. Chase, that is you. 25. Negative 25. 16. Negative 16. Eight. Negative eight. Which is it? Who's on team eight? Who's on team negative eight? You're correct. And lastly? An eight. An eight. Okay, good. Any questions on those? Okay. On to square roots. First off, they don't have to have a bar across the top. I kind of like them better when they do, but they don't have to. So if you see that symbol, it just means square root. Next, there's actually a little tiny two there. And most kids don't know that until they get to cubed roots. When you have a cube root, you start realizing, what, there's a little number there? And they just don't write it when it's a two because that's the most common root. But if it's like third like that, let's so make sure you get that. What is the cube root of eight? Two. Because two. Two, two times two times two makes eight. And you can do negatives on the odd kind. So this one is negative two. Can I do it on the fourth root? No, you cannot. So if I said, what's the fourth root of 16? That actually works. But I can't do the fourth root of negative 16. What's the difference? On the odd ones, they can have negatives. On the evens, they can't. Because the answer is two. And two times two times two times two makes 16. But if I wanted this to be negative 16, and I used a negative, 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 they would all cancel and it would be positive 16. So that doesn't work. So fourth roots are a thing. They're just like square roots though. They can't be negative. All right. Next, go to this slide. Square root of 48. It's really root and root. Root four and root 12. But the problem with doing it that way is you're gonna get two root 12 and think you're done. Why aren't you done? Because root 12 breaks up also. Now it's two times root four, root three, and that root four is two then. It's two times two times root three, which is really four root three. Wouldn't it have been smarter to start in the first place with a bigger root? Think about it now that you know the answer. What's the bigger root that you should use? Tw not, 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 not 12 times four because we already did that and it, and it was like pokey. We got it, but we took us a long time. 24 and two also multiplies to 48, but square root of 24 doesn't work nice. So it's not that. 16 and three, there it is. Because square root of 16 is four, four root three. All right, from my past experience, we probably need to practice this a little bit because this comes up a ton and you gotta be good at it. So here's a typical reason. You're doing this problem in, in trig, or sorry, you're in second semester pre-calc and you end up with like a, um, a square root of 27 on this side. And this side's three and this side's, uh, I don't know, X. That root 27 has to be simplified in your final answer. So would everybody please simplify the root 27? Hint, make two square roots first. One of them works out nice, and you get the answer. Mr. Mary, two square roots, what'd you get? Um, we just double check. That's right. No, that's fair. Take pause for take, take a second. Uh, Elon Musk is one of the smartest people in the world. Uh, not the smartest, but one of them. Uh, and he often will take a full minute before he answers a question. Thanks. Uh, nine and three. Thanks. Thanks. And then nine goes down. Three root three, very nice. How many of you guys had that one right? Okay, let's do another one like that because not many people had that one right. Square root of 200, hint, two square roots, one of them's 100. Square root of 100, square root of two, 10 root two. Raise your hand if you had 10 root two. Okay, we're getting more people. Let's try one more. Square root of 32. Uh, 
I know some of you aren't quite as quick on your little multiplication tables in your head, and that's okay. You just can't be incredibly slow at it. Otherwise, the tests in this class are timed. Now, if you get a 504 and IEP, you get extended time. I mean, if that's in the IEP or 504. But otherwise, you just have to the end of the hour. Now, our tests are only like 13 questions long. But I get some people are just really slow at this kind of thing, and it's fine. It's just not, it's not awesome. Don't tell yourself, I'm slow and that's okay. You should tell yourself, I'm slow and I should get faster. Because name me a boss who wants to hire the, the really slow person. I want somebody who takes twice as long to do their projects. Uh, zero bosses ever want you to take twice as long. Uh, or if you're at the board meeting and, they, and, the, and the question comes up, we got nine groups coming uh, and we got to have eight of these mugs for each group. You're like nine times eight. They think you can't do nine times eight in your head. It's not going to look real good. Not saying that calculators are bad. Saying that you should be able to be kind of fast. Otherwise, it makes it look like you don't know math. All right. By now, I should have figured out that this was 16 and 2, which is 4 root 2. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Awesome. Okay. So what if it had been negative? Now, the easy answer that you learned last year was that, oh, so there's no answer for that. No solution. Okay. But we have to go one step further. How many of you know about I? Mm, nobody. Okay, then you're going to learn about I right now. Okay. When it's negative 32, then I know square roots and negatives. I just said two seconds ago that, that there's no solution for them. That is true. But they have come up with a way to make it work by saying the square root of negative 1 can be factored out and then defined as an I. And I'm telling you, when I first heard this, I kind of thought, oh, this is just some math, like, professor making up stuff. Like, just going to call that I so that it's, so we can say that it works out. That's an I. And then you go, the answer has an I in it, so you usually squeeze it right there. 4I root 2. And it seemed kind of, like, contrived to me. Like, you're making something work that doesn't really work. But then I found out that there's actually real equations that electrical engineers use that have to have I in them or the equation doesn't work. And the equation, even though it's using I for an imaginary number, actually computes things in the real world that are used about the flow of electricity in a line. So bottom line, they made up an imaginary thing, but it was so useful that they need it to do real things. So don't think of imaginary as just like a cheat. Uh, it's actually used in the real world, and you can Google that if you want to later. Yes? So what exactly is I? So I is defined as the square root of negative 1. So I know, I know, it seems made up. That's what I said. But... All you have to do is throw in an I in your answer, and you're saying that the answer would have been this, except it's imaginary. And that, I'm telling you, it's, a lot, it's, it's allowed for some breakthroughs in math related to electricity, flow of electricity, that we couldn't do without it. And we have these equations that have I built into them. And it's actually worth it enough that TI, Texas Instruments, that makes those TI-84 graphing calcs, I have one somewhere here, but... Um, they have the I on the keyboard. It's one of the biggies. So you can use I when you're calculating on your calculator, too. So I is something you need to know how to do. Let me show you one more time. Square root of 4 would just be 2. That's easy. How about square root of negative 4? Well, then you go, that's like actually square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1. And that's 2. And that's I. So the answer is 2I. Yes, you can give answers that are imaginary, but they're real because they actually work. Like normally imaginary things are just all in your head, like the imaginary friend. But what if the imaginary friend was necessary? Ooh, weird. Yes. I thought you were raising your hand just now. Okay, so one more. We already did something like this. Uh, let's go with... 
That's on your next test, and you simplify it down. Hint, height's about the three square roots. The square root of negative one, and the square root of a couple other things. Compare with the kid next to you. Wait till they're done. It's kind of rude to just show them your answer. Just wait until they're both done, and then, and you're like, are you done? Yeah, I'm done. Then compare answers. Okay, Madeline Brown, what do you say? Three square roots would have been what three things? You're giving me the answers, though. So break, go back a step. What were the three square roots you broke it into? Four and three and negative one. Four and three and negative one. Nice. And then uh, I think you were right. This is two. This is root three and this is an I. So two I root three. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Cool. Usually you sandwich the I in between the other two things. The I's in the middle. Just like on a cyclops. Okay. So let's get on to the next page. This one, the negatives aren't under the roots, so don't let that confuse you. The negatives are just on the outside. And 98, what the heck does that break into? Who's got it? Square root of 49, 49 and what? 2, that'll help. And this one... It's kind of weird because it's part real and it's part square root. And I shouldn't have said real. It's part rational and it's part irrational. Square roots that don't work out nice are called irrational numbers. So this is part real and part irrational. How about if it's negative under the root? That's called imaginary. Let me give you that as a, like... For those that really like to know, uh, that's real. That's rational. And it's real. This is irrational, but real. This is imaginary, so it's not real. But it's not irrational either, because it doesn't have a decimal. It goes on forever and never repeats. OK, you should have said root 4, root 2. That's 2. What's negative 2 times 2? Negative 4. There you go. OK, so. This is the one we just talked about. So if you get imaginaries, you should be able to give me these three answers. Boom, boom, boom. Did you say three, yeah. negative three, yeah. and three i, right? The i, I just write that way because if I make it straight up and down, it kind of looks like 31. So your i can be any way you want. I do the same thing with t's. If I say 4t, I'm always going to write it with a curved t because 4t looks like 4 plus. You know what I mean? So I think it's smart to have a little curve at the bottom of things that aren't numbers. So that's why I write my 3i that way. Okay, moving on. This, you know what, I'm just doing it quick, and you tell me if you think I'm right. Square root of 25, 5. 
square root of negative 9, 3i. Negative square root of 16, negative 4. Square root of 18, root 2 and root 9, which is 3 root 2. And root 4 and root 3, which is 2 root 3. You guys agree? I agree. Cool. All right. This is a big one right here. A ton of you are taught this wrong. And this is one of those rare moments where I'm calling out teachers. I did it. I did it wrong a long time ago. I've been doing it right for many, many years now. But I did it wrong. And I think some of your teachers did it wrong. And here's what they did. They went square root, square root. And then they said x equals 80, square root of 81 is 9. But then they were like, oh, but there's two answers to square root of 81. So we're going to say plus and minus 9. That is wrong. It's wrong for two reasons. Now, first off, the answer, positive and negative 9, is right. But what's wrong about it is that this implies to the kid that square roots have two answers, which they don't. The square root of 81 is just 9. It's not both. You want proof? Type it in your calculator. Type square root of 81. Will it tell you two things? No, because there's only one answer. Type it into something really smart like chat GPT and ask what's the square root of 81. It'll only tell you one answer. Okay, there's not two answers. Now, I know you're going to say, but negative 9 times negative 9 is 81. That doesn't mean that it's the answer. There's only one answer to the square root of 81. Just wait. And the other thing that's wrong about this is that People go square root of x squared and they think it's x, and it's not. The square root of x squared is not x. The square root of x squared is the absolute value of x. Now, I get that that's disturbing to have somebody tell you you've been doing it wrong, but many of you have been doing it wrong. The square root of x squared is the absolute value of x, and you have to do it that way or it's going to be marked wrong. And it'll also mess you up because you'll think things that are not true. Like you'll think, oh, if I just square root this, it'll just be x. And it isn't. It's absolute value of x. So let me finish this off. Square root of 81 is 9. So then that's really what you're supposed to write. And then from there, didn't we just do absolute values on the first 20 thing? And then you can break it into two equations, x equals 9 and x equals negative 9. So again, what I don't like is the shortcut thing because it's telling kids that this actually equals x, which it doesn't. And I can prove that one more way. Like some people like, no, no, Mr. Server, the other way is just fine. It's, it actually works out the same. I got to prove it to you because there's extra smart kids in here that you're going to need this to see that it's really not true. If I have x squared and I write graph y equals x squared, everybody knows that's a parabola, right? y equals x squared, that's like a curvy shape. Now, if I square root that, the de debate begins because some people are like, no, it's just x. And I just said, it's not x. Well, how could we tell? What if we graphed the square root of x squared? What if we graphed that? If we graph this, there's two choices. It'll either look like this, which is the line y equals x. And that just means the answer is x. And Mr. Server, this whole thing you've been saying is wrong. If it comes out like that, then the answer to this is y equals x, that the square root of x squared is just x. But it won't. It won't look like that. Anybody know what it's going to look like? It's going to be like this. And guess what that's the graph of? absolute value of x. All right, so moral of story, and I know some of you really don't care, and others of you are like, I still don't understand what you're even talking about, but some of you by now have figured out that when you do this, you get the absolute value of x. Why does it really matter? Because of the negative numbers. If I put in negative 2, for instance, if I put it in here, do you get because you're squaring it? you'll just get a positive answer. And that means I can put in negative 2 and I can put in 2 and it's going to work. 
and it'll give you a positive answer. C, positive. It's up above the line. Makes a V-shape. It's the absolute value. Okay, enough without that. I've learned that there are some kids that no matter if I explain it like 36 times, they're still not going to get it. But, see, if you were infected with that virus that says, I just, you just have to, uh, like, put a plus and minus on it, then you're going to think the answer to this is plus and minus 9. And it's not. Because did I square root a variable here? No. So the answer to this is just 9. Square roots have one answer, not two. That's the other problem with doing it this way is kids start thinking that square roots have two answers, plus and minus two. No. No. This is the absolute value of x, and there's only one answer, two. Then there's only one answer to square roots. And then you break it into two things, x equals two, x equals negative two is your final answer, and it's because there was a variable squared. And when you drop something in there, it'll act the same whether you put in 2 or negative 2. Okay, enough about that. The next thing is called absolute value, and the I read this in the list of things that you have to know for the ACT. One of them is you must know what the real-world explanation for an absolute value is, and that is that it's a distance. This is how far from five, or no, how far away is this from zero? Five. How far away is this from zero? Also five. That's why they come out the way they do. Now, if you want to oversimplify it, you'll just say, well, absolute values just make everything positive. Yeah, that actually breaks because zero. Zero wasn't positive or negative in the first place. But another way to say it is, what's the smallest distance that there is? One. I know you're thinking, but that, that point 0.1 is like really small, but there's things smaller than point 0.1. A zero. And that's the smallest that an absolute value can be is zero. If I said, how far from my classroom am I? Uh... You're in the classroom. You're zero away from your classroom. Okay? So if absolute values are distances, what they're saying is, how far is that from zero? And you'd say, eight. How far is that away from zero? Also eight. Okay? Now we can get into more complicated ones, but we got enough things on the plate today but otherwise, we could say things like x minus 8 equals 4 is actually asking for what are the things that are 4 away from 8. That's actually the distance, things that are 4 away from 8. But let's not. So overstress on that, we'll just do it. x minus 8 is 4, x minus 8 is negative 4, and these two things wait, 8 times 12, negative. What am I doing wrong then? I think those are right. I think it's right, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to check it. I put 12 in here. Is it, is it working? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. If I put in 4, is it still working? Yeah. Yep. So these are the two things that are 4 away from 8. Did you get 4? Is 4 away from 8? And 12 is also 4 away from 8. All right, I think I'm breaking some brains here. I'll have to get, the, get out the paper towels for the exploding brains. But anyways, this is also a distance, but we won't test you on that. I just kind of threw that in as an extra fun fact. All right, these should tell me whether you really get absolute values or not. Get those four answers. And in a second, I'll have you prepare with the kid next to you.
Today is going to go probably, my lesson's going like 10 minutes longer than it normally would because we had to talk about how to grade the homework. Next time we won't have to go over that because you'll have already done it. You just drop box it in the first place, then you grade it again in red, circle all the problems, put your score at the top, sign it, and read drop box it. All right, you should have had nine, five, What's in between here? It's implied that that's multiplied. Did you know that? If two things are snug right next to each other. The implied, the multiplication is there. So that's really three. Three times negative two, negative six. And last but not least, that's 12. That makes it negative 12. Who had all four of those right? Fantastic. On to... This one, the temptation is going to be that you're going to think that there's two answers because there's square roots and some people are still infected with that virus. Square roots only have one answer. Okay, go ahead and figure out these answers. Knowing there's only one answer, sometimes the answer has a square root in it. Like two root seven. you get two for the first one? Okay, you're on the right track then. If you left it a square root of 27, you shouldn't have. You should have uh, simplified. Three root three would have been right though. Next one, negative, or sorry, the negative gets ignored until the end. So the first thing I do is the 12, and the absolute value of 12 is 12, and then 12 squared is 144. The negative only comes on at the very end, negative 144. If there had been a parentheses here, it would have been positive, but there wasn't. Square root of 4, which is 2. And this one, uh, let me think. Just this first. Square root of 81 is 9. Then it's negative 9. Then it's the absolute value of that, which is 9. Then it's the square root of 9, which is 3. And then it's negative 3. Who had negative 3 on the last one? All right, that's the hardest one, for sure. Okay, so there is a Schoology quiz. I'd like you to start it so that you know it's there, and then it's it kind of insultingly easy. Like, there's like 20 questions that will take you about 10 seconds each. Okay, if you understand negatives and square roots and all that stuff. Last explanation that I hope I only have to do once. You get two tries. Why? Because after the first try on a Schoology quiz, I reveal the answers. Same logic. I've had it before where somebody's told me, no, that's wrong. And I'm like, well, what is the right answer then? I want the right answers. So I would want them if I were you. So I give you the right answers to the quiz on your first try. Then, see... Now you already know all the right answers. So if I just let you have two tries, everybody's going to get a perfect paper because they're just going to retype them all in and they'll get a perfect paper. And that's not realistic. So I give you two tries and the average is what you get for your score. The vast majority of kids, if you get one, one or two wrong, they don't redo it because they're like, that's close enough, good enough. Okay, so you're going to do the Schoology quiz once and then have uh, you get some score on it. And if it's terrible, maybe you should look at the answers. And you can do it again, but you're going to get the average of the scores. Prevents kids from putting crap answers in, seeing what all the right answers are, and then just pasting that into the second try and getting a perfect paper. I don't want the person to get crap answers, see the right answers, and then a perfect paper. So you get the average of two tries. That's thoroughly thought out, and it's, I've been doing it for years, and it works. All right. And... It is very close to time, but it's not quite time. we got three minutes. Yeah, so 12.40, about three minutes left. So scribble it up and just put a nine over it. Okay, 
Now it's negative nine, right? Mm -hmm. Now what's the absolute value of that? Nine. Good. Then what's the square root of that? Three. Yep. And the last thing that happens. Oh, did that? That negative slaps on. Oh. All right. Good. Normally we will have more time for work time. I think you'll find that that assignment is kind of easy. So yeah, you have some homework, but it's pretty short. And this is the part where I'm totally good with you guys packing up and getting ready to go so you can leave on time.